Hello, I'm Jerry Crow from the Pacifica Historical Society and host of Footprints of Pacifica, the show where we explore the lure and lore of lovely Pacifica, its character and its characters. Our guest uh, on this show is Lois Jones, 50-year educator and uh, former principal of Oceana High School. Welcome, Lois. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Uh, why don't we start with your background, where you grew up, and so forth. Okay. I grew up in San Francisco. Um, my dad was an electrician. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. And I had one sister, Barbara. And um, we went to public schools in San Francisco. Went to Aptis Junior High School, Commodore Sloat Grammar School, and Lincoln High School. Um, while I was in in school, I had lots of interests. Um, I loved to water ski. I liked to fish with my father. We used to go fishing all the time and camping. And, um, and I liked sports. And of course, in my family, my mother had me take dancing lessons <laughs> and piano lessons. But when I got to college, I was more interested in springboard diving Oh, and really? gymnastics. Yeah. So I was interested in lots of outdoor things. Um, and I loved to read. So that was pretty much what I can tell you about my early Did you realize uh, that you were headed for a teaching career at that time? Not uh, when I was in, in high school. I think when I um, entered San Francisco State University, I um, I thought about teaching, and um, I was interested in it. Um, the other interest I had was I, I did a master's degree in exercise physiology, and I was interested in physical therapy. But in order to finish that program, I was going to have to go up to Oregon, and my family you know, financially couldn't afford that, and they weren't about to let me move away from home. So then my other option was teaching, and um, I was looking forward to that, and I loved it. It was a great decision for me. So you, did you start teaching right out of college? Yes. Yeah. I had just turned 21 mm -hmm. when I started teaching. And initially uh, at the elementary level? Or? No, high school. Uh -huh. I was high school. I wasn't much older than the seniors. Uh -huh. I started teaching at South San Francisco High School. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what year was that then, roughly? Oh. <laughs> the, around uh, 1960? Uh, no, but it had been 50, 58, maybe 58, yeah. 59. Yeah, yeah. Pacifica was just being formed in That's right. There were no schools here at uh -huh. that time. So what uh, then attracted you to the Pacifica opportunity? Well, you know, um, I applied for a job with the Jefferson Union High School District, and there were jobs opened at Jefferson and Westmore, and they were forming a new school, Oceana. And I thought, oh, that sounds good. I'd like to be part of a new school. So I signed a contract to be part of Oceana, and I was in the afternoon session at Westmore for that first year. Is it more difficult? Uh getting your curriculum ready to go for or your uh, guides uh, for a, a new school or than an established one? Well, you know, I was young. <laughs> I was naive and I really wasn't the world's greatest teacher. That comes after years and years of lots of hard work. So, you know, I was energetic and had lots of ideas and so nothing seemed very difficult to me at that time. Oh, good. Um, I have a picture here of you. This is uh, taken in 1962. And this would have been shortly after Oceana actually, the classes actually began. Right. But uh, there was a complication you were describing to me earlier that right. you can at, tell us about. At the end of um, the first year of Oceana, uh, when the school was operating out of Westmore High School in an afternoon session, uh, the building at, of um, Oceana was delayed. 
So Oceana was moved to the Terra Nova campus. And then the name was changed from Oceana to Terra Nova. So the following year, Oceana campus itself opened. So I applied to go to Oceana because that's where I was going to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, the student body hadn't yet coalesced or gelled, so uh, well, I guess it wasn't too disturbing Well, the students on the coast students. all knew one another, uh -huh. you know, and there was no competition um, among the, the students at that point. I think after the high schools opened, it became competitive, but they were all friends. They all went to school together. And uh, most of the, the, of course, the students who came up to Oceana were those who lived in the northern part of Pacifica. Was there any particular differentiation between the approaches at the two high schools? No, they were both comprehensive there? schools. Mm -hmm. When did the, uh, the athletic uh, rivalry get really started? Well, it started with football. And it started the first year that we opened which um, was very difficult for the kids at Oceana. Um, we didn't have any seniors the first year, so we only had sophomores and juniors, and they had to play varsity ball. And I don't know where that decision was made, you know, but there was a real feeling in Pacifica that there needed to be this competition between the two high schools. And, um, and so our youngsters were young and tiny, and they were getting wiped all over the field the first year. It was really a difficult time for the kids, and it was a difficult time for Jess, mm -hmm. who was coaching. And this that, is Jess. That's Jess. Yeah. And uh, he was there from the beginning as coach also? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And did he coach uh, just football or No, or he, coached, he coached swimming. He coached football. Uh, he coached some track for a while. Yeah, he was. Yeah. They're still known for their swimming, I think. They're... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, somewhat later from the student newspaper, this article came up. <laughs> you want to tell us uh, yeah, what and, that was about? Yeah, um, Jess and I were met when we were teaching at um, Westmore High School on double session. And we then went with Oceana down to um, Terra Nova campus. And at that point we started dating. And at Christmas vacation of that year we were at Terra Nova, we went to Carson City and got married. And so that's the article that the students put in the newspaper when we came back in January and we let everyone know that we had gotten married. So I wonder how they got the scoop. Well, they got it from us. Well, I mean, mm, okay. you know, when we came back. I see. I mean, it was pretty, we just didn't, no one knew we were even dating. So that caused some buzz on the campus. Oh, it, after was, the it was lots of buzz. There was lots of buzz. <laughs> so uh, what was uh, high school teaching in, in Pacifica like in, the, in those days? How would you describe it? Well, it was, it was exciting for me, you know, and the first year um, at, um, at Oceana, I was in counseling. I had gone to school in the evenings and, and it took a, a pupil personnel services credential so I could counsel. So I was a counselor and I taught um, period of physical education. And, you know, I loved the kids. I loved what I did. I, you know, I was one of these people who just liked being in the schools, liked working with students, really liked working with students. And I liked the relationships that developed over time. I felt part of the community. I got to know a lot of the parents really well. A lot of the parents worked at the school. Um, we've maintained lifetime friendships. Hmm. Uh, your physical education teaching, uh, did you continue with your dance emphasis or gymnastics or what? Well, did you... I kind of did whatever was needed, mm -hmm. you know, 
if we were teaching volleyball, we did volleyball. If we did oh, right, so it, sports. It just, yeah, mm -hmm. and I like sports. And in fact, um, at one point I helped my husband coach, I coached the divers for my husband when he was coaching swimming. So I did mm -hmm. that after school. And uh, let's see. Um, Was there a particular reason the school was founded, other than that the community was growing so fast that they, no. they, they didn't have the, uh, the academic specialization that they developed later on? No, right? no, they were both comprehensive schools. Mm -hmm. um, the curricula was pretty similar. And, uh, well, how did that transition come about to what uh, uh, they are now, more of a slightly more academic Well, in emphasis? the... Um, in the, in the late 80s, there was a lot of um, movement toward um, whole school change efforts to have students become more deeply involved in their own learning and less being in classrooms where there was lot, a lot of lecture, where there was lots of material covered, but maybe not as much depth as... I see. So one of the, <clears throat> the focuses that we had was depth over breadth. So we wanted students to learn things and to learn a lot about them and to learn in depth and see the connections between all of their learning so that history wasn't in a box and English wasn't in a box. So we, we developed a humanities program where there was an, with an integrated art component so that students in humanities had a social science component, an English component, and an art component, and the, the subject matter was coordinated. So there was lots of hard work for the teachers. It was, it and was did it. you pretty much develop this approach here, or did, was it something that had been <laughs> No, there was a, an organization uh, called um, uh, Coalition of Essential Schools out of Brown University, and that's where it started. Hmm. And, um, but there was talk about a, a school that was restructuring or reforming into, into a different kind of school. Uh, before our school actually started, there were committees in the district that were set up, and um, the superintendent and the school board and the American Federation of Teachers worked together to, in conversations um, to deal with how things would need to be different and how there would need to be waivers for this to happen. Mm -hmm. So that groundwork, yeah, that was already in place. And then the job opened and I, it was offered to me. It was exciting and hard work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, your career then, uh, how long were you teaching before you went into administration? I think I went into administration like in 1976 maybe. I, I was, a, I was a, a vice principal of guidance Yes. after I had been a counselor. So I did that. More or less mid-career it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. And then I you know, took on the principalship of, of the restructuring of Oceana. How was... Um, how was your time divided? Did you spend a, a lot with parents during the transition, or was, was it pretty well established? Or how you mean you moving into the principalship? Yeah, yeah. Um, we spent a lot of time with the community, ex explaining what the program was going to be about. Um, we spent a lot of time with one another once the staff was identified for the new school. I mean, there was a lot of, uh, my first semester, or first, in the, what, that first year I was principal, what I was essentially doing was closing down a comprehensive school 
and working with a group of teachers to build a different kind of school that would open that September. And it was a hard time. Yeah, sounds It intense. was really, really a difficult time for students, for parents, for staff. I mean, there were people at Oceana who had been there for years and years, and they knew that this wasn't something they wanted to do, be a part of. And there weren't going to be electives, and there weren't going to be the athletics. And so um, there were lots of people with different kinds of emotions. Some were just heartbroken, some were angry. It was, it was a lot of turmoil and disruption in, in everyone's life. Um, and then the teachers who wanted to be part of the Oceana reform, they applied from throughout the district. So there were people who hadn't been at the school, but they were all people who were interested in a different kind of educational program. So that was really hard because there were people who had been great teachers at Oceana who applied but didn't necessarily get into the program. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was really, it was, it was heart-wrenching and it was sad and parents didn't know, you know, which way they wanted their kids, which school the, the students could go to Terra Nova or stay at Oceana. But the school was going to be downsized. And the reduction in sports emphasis, I'm sure. Yeah, there was, was no, there was, was no funding for athletics. And, uh, and, and they, no electives. They become accustomed to a, oh, a, yeah. a very full program. I That's think. right. So for, for the athletes, most of them, um, you know, went to Terra Nova and had a wonderful program down there. Um, so, but it, it, was, it was hard for the students and it was very difficult for their parents. It was difficult for the staff. I hadn't thought about the parents experiencing a mm -hmm. difficulty in it. Well, I think it was disruptive. You know, there were parents who had students who were athletes, oh, who sure. were in electives at the school, and, and then all of a sudden, to stay with your, you know, you could friends. either stay in this new program or you could go to another school. And for the kids who were really interested in a specific learning area or elective area, or athletics, you know, they wanted to go where the sports were. Sure. So there was a lot of turmoil there. I wonder if they still have a trophy room though at Oceana. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, one of the very interesting things is that the, uh, the first community access television started there at Oceana High School. Yes, it did, yes, it did. And I, I can remember the old camera being wheeled around in the science rooms. And uh, it was all student activity, or did they have any professionals to help them? Well, learn one, the ropes, of, one of our staff members um, sort of initiated, I don't know if he initiated it or how he became the driver of the. Had a background, though. Had a background. Yeah. And uh, he was. Uh, very much involved, and the students were involved. It, it, was, it was a big thing. Yeah, well, remarkable that it uh, evolved into Channel 8, and mm -hmm. that became Channel 26, and right. that's uh, where we are at the moment. That's right. And, and I, I'm told by uh, Marty Anaya, the, the uh, executive director here, that it's the, the oldest continuous operating community access television in the country. So That's great. Yes, it's a big plus. Uh, let's see, we discussed restructuring and the, uh, the basic philosophy. Uh, oh, the student's role in the community. Uh, I think that's uh, another thing that impresses yeah. me a lot about their yeah, approach that, up there. That was a really important part of of um, our philosophy was that students needed to be a part of their community and they needed to give back to their community. And so we <clears throat> set up a graduation, part of our graduation requirement was 50 hours of community service. No, 100 hours of community <laughs> service. <laughs> and um, 
the, the school board approved it because that was not a graduation requirement for the other district schools. Um, they also changed, we, we were allowed to get a waiver on our graduation requirements to have a requirement of four years in the humanities, which entailed having more in the area of the social sciences as a graduation requirement. So we were able to get waivers. We also had a graduation exhibition and demonstration of a learning mastery that was part of our graduation requirement. Yes, yes. And, and, and the students do remarkable yeah, work on that. They do. The, the senior exhibitions are wonderful. They were, they were rough when we started and every year I was there they got better and now they're just wonderful. You know, it takes a long time to build that kind of a, a curriculum. But um, the community service, we, had a, we were able to write some grants. At that time, there was money from the state and from the Bay Area um, Collaborative for schools that were restructuring, were making whole school change efforts. And so there were four of us from the school who wrote grants. Um, myself, John Larmer, Judy Borelli, and Mary Bennett. And we would meet at my house, <laughs> we would write grants, and we were able to get some really good financial assistance, which allowed us to provide tremendous um, opportunities for teachers to have professional development. And Excellent. it, was, yeah. it was really, it was, a, it was a blessing that we had that. And it also allowed us then to use some of that money to have someone to coordinate the community service work. Yes. Now let's take a look at a few more of the photographs you've brought with me. Okay. Uh, this is uh, yourself in, and Jess at the Senior Ball, 1969. That's right. That's right. We went to every Senior Ball for the first several years we were married. Then Jess decided that the senior balls really weren't something he, that he just really loved to do. So then I just went by you myself. And, had to be because I was always or... having to work and whatever. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I just went by myself. <laughs> and here is the Frost Soft Champs swim team, 1977. That's right. The swimming team was always special to Jess and it was special for me too, because I helped with the divers. And, um, and we used to have a barbecue in our backyard in Belmont for the diving team, or for the swimming team. And they would come down and I would cook chili and Jess would barbecue hot dogs and, and hamburgers. And the kids would play touch football on our back lawn. But we kind of had to stop the touch football because we just had a little low fence and over our fence was all kinds of poison oak. Oh, yeah. And some of the kids, the ball would go over the fence. They were all perspiring. They would, they came down with I really bad cases works. of poison oak. So that had to stop. The barbecue didn't stop, but the football did. All right, this next shot is commencement, June 1984. That's right, and that's when I was vice principal. And um, that was at one of the graduations. I was saying a few words. Graduations were always special at oh, Oceana. I'm yeah, I'm sure they were. Uh, this is a, a bit small, but shows the the uh, oh, that's the a great anchor one. trophy when the that the was two the first that, were, that was the first time that Oceana won the anchor. That was a big day. So that was a big deal. <laughs> and then, let's see. Here you are teaching a cooking class. Right. Under a, a rather <laughs> right. We had what was called an interim program because we didn't have electives for the students. It was mostly all academic work. So two weeks during the, right after Christmas vacation, we would have uh, what was called an interim program and we had electives. Every teacher would opt to teach an elective, something that was maybe a hobby of theirs. And, um, that was a demonstration that I did of cooking. Excellent. The 
then this one is uh, your retirement party. Yes, that's my the- retirement party. And I'm sitting alongside of my daughter, Suzanne. And I was just delighted. And she was so proud. And of course, it was a wonderful evening for the whole family because it was my retirement party. My husband had just, Jess had just gone down to San Jose State and Susie had run the 1500 um, meter race oh. and she qualified for the Olympic trials. For goodness sake. So that was the day of my graduation, of, of my retirement party. It was just all kinds of wonderful things. I'll say. So she was a jock too. Oh. <laughs> It sounds like the whole family was skilled at athletics. <laughs> that's right. Then uh, this is uh, the same year, and that's you that's, with Superintendent Crilly. That's right. That was my last graduation at Oceana. But uh, you didn't stop with your educational activities <laughs> with retirement. No, I didn't. I, I retired in 96, and shortly after that, I started working for the Bay Area School Reform Collaborative. It was an organization that um, would work with schools who are making whole school changes. And there were funds available for scholarships, I mean, for, um, for, for programs in the schools, I not see. for scholarships for students, but monies for the school grants for the schools. And so, um, they contacted myself and a, a principal, Camille Moore, who had retired from Lafayette. And we teamed up and we went into the schools to take a look at their programs and see if there really were whole school change efforts happening. So we did that for a while. And then after that, I went to work for, um, for UCLA School Management Program. And I did that for three or four years. Well, Lois, I'm afraid we're just about out of time. But, <laughs> okay. uh, that's been very interesting. Thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome. And um, well, that's about all the time we have. So um, if any of the audience would like to get in touch with Pacifica Historical Society, you can reach us but through our post office box 752 Pacifica 94044, or check our, our uh, website pacificahistory.org and um, always remember that the lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints in the sands of time. Thank you.